So the next thing we want to look at is uh, technical documentation. So technical documentation is the use of Create Illustrate. And what we can do here is uh, we're basically creating any sort of 2D, 3D geometry or using our 3D geometry to create instructional manuals, um, assembly, disassembly sequences, um, and guide user experience. So these things could be in the forms of animations, sequences. Uh, we can basically export out 2D vector images, um, or we can pull this information into AR through v Studio um, for you to use. Okay, so Creo Illustrate Essentials essentially gives you the power to you know, create these 3D animations, um, sequences and animations. We have Winchell integration, uh, the ability to have many publishing formats. So you'll see it uh, through the export functionality and also extensions for um, Creo schematics and things of that nature. Okay. So Creo Illustrate, very powerful. We can see that uh, within a single Illustrate file, you have the ability to not only have multiple figures over here on the left, so you could have multiple different scenarios that you're trying to describe. You're not using multiple files, um, essentially all managed within the one using the same 3D content. Um, we can take individual figures and convert them into sequences and animations to have step-by-step -step procedures to guide users um, when they're performing certain tasks or actions. Um, Illustrate also has the power to restructure our SBOM. So uh, the bill of materials that we're essentially pulling in from our 3D content, we can restructure this in a way that is useful uh, for highlighting purposes, for grouping purposes, really depends on your application and what you're trying to use it for. And we can also look and view attribute information. So this information is coming from uh, Creo itself, or it can come from um, Winchell. So this information allows you to basically pull through um, attributes into your drawings um, and allow you to make everything a bit more dynamic uh, and prevent you from or uh, allow you to update uh, in the parent and then have it flow through. Okay. And this just improves things like your efficiency. You're able to easily create this sort of imagery uh, and designs uh, very quickly. So you don't have to go through, you know, manual um, hand drawings, uh, anything of that. You don't have to take it into Photoshop or Creo or uh, Illustrator. You basically just take it into this software using your native 3D CAD geometry and create all your designs, uh, imagery off the fly. So this is a couple of customers that use Creel Illustrate. So you can see that it's widely adopted across the industry. Um, so those of you probably know, these are probably familiar faces to a lot of you. Um, so it's quite well known uh, within, the, within the space uh, and very popular amongst organizations. Okay, so we'll jump into a demonstration here. Okay, so this is my front suspension again. So what we can see here is we have a model tree over on the left-hand side with a bunch of different figures. So I can easily switch between these figures um, to show different render states. Um, so things like if we want an outline, uh, if we want uh, shading, cell shading, and then we can go ahead and we'll actually customize one of these to show you sort of the functionality um, within Illustrate itself. So over here we have our SBOM. If I expand this out, we can see that it's working off part numbers. So this might be handy from, say, a procurement point of view, where you're interested in the actual bill of materials and what uh, the corresponding values are. Um, but for someone like me that's designing this or creating documentation, uh, this might seem a bit confusing. It doesn't really correlate to anything. Uh, we can easily change this within Illustrate. So we jump over and use what's known as alternate part names. I can basically configure this to use attributes um, from both ProE and Windshield. So in here, you can see there's a variety of different metadata that's included. 
uh, just a matter of selecting it and including it in. So I've already defined a value from there. If I hit apply, we can now see that our SBOM has been updated. So this is going to allow me to easily identify things like lower control arm, the handlebars, et cetera. So once I've done this, um, I can now understand what I'm looking at uh, in terms of my 3D content and my SBOM. Uh, let's talk about actually modifying this structure. So to do so, up the top, we'll get, click on Edit Structure. I'll basically turn on my engineering bomb, which gives me a view of it. And this is interactive, so I can choose from the model tree as well as the graphics window using box select, um, individual button clicks and so forth. Uh, what I want to do is I want to take this steering column and actually take it into its own assembly. So instead of having it as individual parts, I'll uh, condense it down. So what I'm going to do here is basically right click and create my corresponding part. And then from there, I can simply select. I can click on mold tree, select the components that I'm interested in and drag them across. So very easy to do. And now if I exit this assembly mode. I'll turn off some of these panels and I'll turn on my newly created sub assembly. So now I'm able to color this as needed um, for documentation purposes. If I want to highlight this specific assembly, then it's very easy to do. I don't have to manually select on each component. So this restructuring makes it uh, very easy and more efficient to do, do things within uh, Illustrate itself. So what I'll do now is actually go and recolor this. And once again, I will Sorry, my mistake. Just make sure I got some color there. And then I'll select my steering column and add that in. So what I want to do now is just change my render mode to hidden line removal, but colored. So now we can see we have uh, the outline of all the, uh, the entire assembly, uh, but we've highlighted that central column that's there. So at this point in time now, we might want to highlight certain geometry. We might want to um, use something called call out to effectively zoom in on a given uh, area or an insert, should I say. So simply I select on that, drag across. I can resize both views, fit my needs, and I can expand that out. So at this point in time now, if I want to insert my callouts, so I want to identify certain items within Create Illustrate, I'll basically choose a callout. From there, I can simply drag and drop. But what you notice here is that these are essentially just bomb balloons. So uh, going through the entire list, it's going to have a corresponding bomb balloon. Um, and doesn't give me any information or context as to what I'm looking at. So for you know, someone that's in purchasing or procurement, then this image might not have any value to them. So we can actually go and manage this and refine that call out to basically show information that we may be interested in. So in this case, like we did previously with the SBOM, I'll go and insert an attribute. So we can see we have a full database here I'm going to turn in on this part number. And if I click that, click apply, we can now see our view and our image basically be updated to showcase the part numbers. So now someone that has this as an image, whether it's in a document um, or an attachment to some sort of um, e-bomb structure, they can look at this image, understand that this is the corresponding component, um, and then go ahead and order it or make changes, um, whether it's repair, um, et cetera. So these images can all be exported out. So once I've created an image, I have the file save figure as, 
um, and we have a variety of different ways we can export it out, uh, whether it's a standard PNG JPEG file, um, as well as illustration files, which have things like IsoDraw um, and SVG. Okay. So the other thing we can do in addition to 2D sort of images um, and line drawings is animation and sequences. So if I jump over here, do is I'll just turn on my assembly. Um, we have our assembly, but we'll notice that we also have the step editor. So this is going to give us the ability to look through and actually define certain sequences, um, whether it's an assembly process or disassembly, um, repair, things of that nature. So we can see each step can be defined. Um, and we have a timeline that shows what's actually happening um, across the board. So if I go through, I can play out this sequence. I can also look at the entire preview. So if I've created a full structure with multiple sequences, then I can run through that assembly of it. So I'll just go through, step through each of these. Um, I can control things like the camera angle, um, the actual position of the components. And I can add things like unscrew effects, um, flashing and so forth. Okay. And then this is the final step. So basically what we'll do now is we'll show how we can create that animation sequence. So what we'll do now is uh, we use a combination of basically the camera location um, and the transform feature to record it. We'll go through, we'll add some effects. So in this case, we want to choose the right uh, direction for that. You can see that we also have a number of different, um, I guess, values that we can determine. So in terms of distance, I can choose whether or not I wanted to translate a certain value. I want them happy with that. I may want to transform this a bit more, so I move it out. Uh, I might want to add some more effects. So it's very easy to go through and start creating these animation sequences. So once I'm happy with that, I might take another camera angle and then zoom out to the entire structure. Okay, so down the bottom here, we'll move my timeline, and then we can capture that camera position. So if I play back my entire sequence, it'll look something like that. So these, these uh, animations can all be exported out. So this sequence, simply clicking on export, um, they'll give you that video if you want to embed it into um, a web page or something um, similar, or we can just straight export it out for storage um, and people can refer back to that at a later date. Okay. okay. Um, the other thing we can do is we can actually include things like uh, exploded lines. So, if we do have diagrams, and in this case, we might have um, back to my 2D drawing here. Um, so we have information. What I'll do is I'll actually use this one here. Okay. So in this case, we have our components. We might want to show how this is pulled apart and then show that exploded sequence. So we'll get rid of this insert. We'll take this initial bolt, for example, and we'll transform it. So as such, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. And now it's a matter of just selecting exploded lines and we can select those components. 
So we can control everything from type of line, um, how we want to have it weighted um, to the colors so we can make it really stand out and showcase. But you can go through and effectively explode out your assembly to show uh, the, exactly how it's put together um, for your documentation. So it makes it very easy uh, to have it all inbuilt into the software. Okay. Okay, so we'll jump back to the presentation now. Okay, so the other thing to note is Creel Illustrate actually comes in three different um, packages. So we have Essentials, Standard, and Professional. Um, when using it, just keep in mind that Essentials is a node locked variation. Um, Illustrate, Standard and Professional do have that floating license aspect of it. Um, so this allows you to have it on multiple uh, machines uh, and you're not restricted to just that one machine. Um, standard, which is what I was using, um, basically has that bomb editing feature. So you won't get that in Essentials, which is nice to have and probably recommended if you guys are thinking of using uh, before a studio or any sort of AR design, um, being able to group up and isolate certain geometry and components uh, makes it a lot easier. 